They just don't have a lot of ways to to get across. I guess the first thing I would say is, um, you know, just tell me a little bit about maybe when it, when it started, when the dream started, when the idea started and just, um, just kind of an introduction to it. Sure. Happy to. So, um, Bill Harberger Park opened in 2010 and, um, it had been, the land had been a dairy farm. Mm -hmm. And when uh, Phil Harberger was mayor of San Antonio, he was looking for land where he could create a park. San Antonio, he felt like, did not have enough um, park land. And this property came up for sale. And it's right in the heart of San Antonio, in the just in the middle of uh, San Antonio's population. And the park is, is owned and operated by the city of San Antonio. And then I'm the director of the Phil Harberger Park Conservancy we're the nonprofit that helps support the park. So we do that 
through um, funding education programs and um, there's been different built projects in the park that we've supported. When it came to the land bridge, um, again, we we raised money um, and uh, we funded the entire design process. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when the design was near completion, we at the same while we were doing that, we were also working on building uh, public support for it. Then the city took on um, a portion of it. It's a twenty-three million dollar project. The Conservancy committed to raising ten million. The other thirteen million was provided by the city through a, a city bond project. So that went to the vote from the people. Okay. Uh, so both things are important: raising the private funds, uh, generating public support, and then the public funding um, or the funds that the Conservancy raised, we got grants from like Texas Park and Wildlife, from um, other foundations in San Antonio and um, up in Dallas, private donors, uh, corporations. We really, uh, we sent out one letter just to a long list of the general public and raised $50,000 50, from that. But just as important was then those people have a, felt a buy-in, you know. And when it did come up for a vote for the city to provide the funding, then um, they were invested um, emotionally and and with their dollars they'd given and um, supported it. So I think that having some kind of a, a public-private partnership. Um, is a terrific way to go. I think if you look at the, uh, there is a conservancy in Houston as well that is helping, that has helped raise funds for what they're doing there. And I suspect if you look at some of the other major projects um, that are on, you know, coming about now, that they'll, there will be a public and private component to those funding. During his time as mayor, I think it's safe to say he, he really made creating public spaces a priority and beautiful public spaces. You'll find the extension of the San Antonio Riverwalk um, from downtown up, uh, goes all the way up to the zoo. Um, it's called Museum Reach. That was a project of his. He created, uh, he restored Main Plaza downtown. Um, and so creating those beautiful public spaces was a, a priority for him. And so it was really his vision that pushed us to do this really big transformative project as opposed to something, you know, just small and, and utilitarian. Yes. And so, uh, yes, definitely his vision that, and his leadership that made it possible. I'm Tracy Davids, and I am the Senior Southeast Representative with Defenders of Wildlife. And Defenders of Wildlife is one of, of many different conservation organizations that is part of a coalition called the Safe Passage Coalition. And there are government agencies, departments of transportation, uh, nonprofit organizations, businesses that are all part of this coalition and we've gathered around a particular project area and that's the Pigeon River Gorge. That's how we formed um, was just a, you know a concern about the movement of animals into new territory particularly as the climate warms um, they're going to be moving further north in search of new habitat food and mates. 
And uh, we want to make sure that we provide safe passage to prevent wildlife vehicle collisions, right? Because this is not just uh, a problem with animals, it's a problem with people. And we want to try to avoid collisions altogether. It's the um, research results and mitigation strategies um, for this area. So a lot of work went into figuring out where the best places for crossings are based on where animals are crossing. I think the easiest thing to remember is our web, our website. It's smokiessafepassage.org. Proverbs 12.10, whoever is righteous has regard for the life of animals. Dry 
Always with me now 